Hello and welcome to another edition of TV30. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and today we are here with a very special guest, the uh, Tourism Officer, Samantha Charles, and we will be discussing the 2024 National Tourism Public Speaking Competition, a competition that will feature few students from various secondary schools across the island. Ms. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Kendall. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's jump. Let's jump right into it. Okay, I remember okay. was last year. Oh, it feels like yeah. yesterday yes. Yes, we it were does. chatting about last year's competition. Yes. Um, for those who may <coughs> not know or understand what the National Tourism Public Speaking Competition is all about, just bring them up to speed about what it is and uh, how, of course, the Ministry of Tourism aims to stimulate the awareness and excitement about tourism among the young people. Sure. Thank you once again for having me. Um, I think by now, persons in the public domain would have heard about the National Tourism Public Speaking Competition. It is really an initiative that we, we host every year mm -hmm. as part of our tourism awareness portfolio. It is actually our signature initiative whereby we um, encourage students with the capabilities to um, you know, engage in public speaking and bring forth their ideas about um, tourism. We try to, as much as possible, enlist the participation of a wide cross-section of our student population because we firmly believe that um, every single school has the potential to participate. Mm -hmm. um, however, there are some secondary schools who um, off the bat, as soon as we put out the notice, they uh, you know, in the forefront in terms of sending in their registration. So um, for this year, the Ministry of Tourism went a little further to enlist some additional um, participation from the schools who may need a little more coaching or coaxing mm -hmm. to participate. So the competition really is a platform for, like I said, students to share their ideas, their views on tourism, um, you know, as students in our current era where technology is the the um the new age the new age thing so to speak mm -hmm. they may have a different vision for tourism as opposed to our um our policy our current policy makers so we we always like to hear what their thoughts are mm -hmm. on um on tourism it's also an avenue to showcase critical thinking and to assess how the students um, break down the different um, tourism, the, the new tourism trends. So what, do they, what, what are their thoughts about the new trends? How do they see these trends contributing to our existing tourism product? And possibly there may be some recommendations that we can take forward in terms of enhancing what we currently offer to our visitors. So in a nutshell, this is the, um, the, the uh, mandate of the Tourism Public Speaking Competition. And uh, the opportunities, <coughs> what would you say they are um, for, or what would the um, opportunities the ministry you would believe would provide to students who participate in such a competition? Okay, so um, before I jump in, if I may, um, let me just go through some of the initiatives that we, we, we took to um, sure. increase the participation. Part right. So first off, what the ministry sought to do in 2024 is to undertake a two-week sensitization drive. Mm -hmm. So like I said earlier, there are some schools who may need a little more coaxing mm -hmm. because you know, they may see, they may feel that um, you know, it's certain secondary schools that always emerge winner yeah. and we want everybody to participate. So we undertook a two-week sensitization drive where we went to seven secondary schools. We presented on the public speaking we engaged them on um, the benefits. Of course, they were very much interested in the prizes mm -hmm. to be won, mm -hmm. but really and truly, apart from that, we wanted them to understand the importance of public speaking and what, you know, what are the benefits of representing your school and putting yourself forward as a potential junior minister. Yeah. So coming out of those, um, of those school visits, and with the schools who that normally participate, we had a total of 13 secondary schools register. So those, um, the students from those 13 schools now um, 
had the opportunity to be part of the preliminary selection process whereby mm -hmm. they were required to submit a video entitled what makes me a true st lucian okay. so we wanted something fun and interactive to um kind of like a precursor to choose the 10 finalists and i must say there was a lot of potential from those videos some of those videos had some really strong uh, marketing potential mm -hmm. you know content we can probably take and develop further in like i said enhancing our our tourism product mm -hmm. so following that we we had the judging of the videos whereby we selected the top 10 mm -hmm. and we obviously notified the schools and they were very elated but additionally we wanted teachers to be more engaged okay um the topics for the public speaking competition we are topics that um, the CTU had already sent out for this year's Youth Congress. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to ensure that the teachers understand what those, um, th those um, subjects are about and how they can assist the students in breaking down the topic, understanding the question, and put, put together the best presentation possible. So the different we topics? Yes. So the topics are um, the blue economy, mm -hmm. solo travel, adventure travel, and collaboration across cultures. So we held a, um, an orientation session for all these our teachers, and the teachers really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. we, we enlisted the support of um, Mr. John Mathre from Serenity Tours and Vacations and Dr. Winston Fulgens from the South Alice Community College, and they presented on these separate areas so the teachers had an opportunity to understand the topics better so that they in turn can assist the students in putting together their presentations so um, in a nutshell these are some of the the things that we did a little different this year to ensure that come next week the day of the competition, competition we have the best in terms of presentations on those um, subject areas now, with um, the topics that were covered, um, can you give us a little bit more insight on what they entailed? Okay. <coughs> so, if you look at solo travel, um, one of the trends currently is that persons are deciding to travel by themselves. Mm -hmm. One may say, oh, it's not a safe practice. You have security to think about, etc. But um, more and more, there are persons on um, Instagram and TikTok actually documenting their solo travel. Mm -hmm. Um, even in St. Lucia, documenting the experience, the, um, the, the product that they enjoy, and generally what, they, what, they, what are their thoughts about the destination. Mm -hmm. So um, the CTO would have looked at those emerging trends and figured these are topics that students um, should present on to get their, their, their take on it. Adventure travel also kind of um, linked to solo travel, what, what is it that we have as a destination to capture the, um, the minds of those thrill seekers? You know, persons don't want to come to sit in a hotel right. and eat and drink, and, but persons want to go out and immerse themselves in the culture, the mm -hmm. experience. That adventure. That person. adventure. So when they leave the destination, you know, they left with a sense of euphoria mm -hmm. almost. So... Um, this is another um, topic that they need to present on. The blue economy. Mm -hmm. It's a model that, um, I, I wouldn't say it's a, a, new, a new subject matter, but basically the blue economy is how you utilize the marine resources in a sustainable manner. Mm -hmm. So um, there are different facets to the blue economy. There's tourism. Um, we, a, large, a large portion of our tourism product it involves use of the sea, so we have our day boat charters, boat tours, dive, etc. Mm -hmm. So there's also the fishing aspect. There's also the commercial aspect, um, you know, with um, sea trade. Mm -hmm. So the blue economy is it probably a new topic to some and may require a little more, a little deeper research to understand the concept. But I am particularly interested to see or to hear what if any student presents on that topic what are their thoughts and their recommendation recommendation sorry now collaboration across cultures mm -hmm. um that one was a little um 
a little a ticklish when we had the orientation for the, the that teachers. Was challenging one. Yes, it was a little challenging. There were more questions mm -hmm. about the topic. What does it mean? But I think Dr. Fulgens did a very good job in explaining it. So as I understand collaboration across cultures, it basically speaks to understanding the different norms of norms of different cultures mm -hmm. and in understanding those norms how do you factor that into um, putting together a product that respects those norms but still you have something that everybody can um, benefit from and enjoy mm -hmm. and experience so again challenging topics but given given the feedback from the teachers and the students that we presented to at the different schools, I have no doubt that they will do a wonderful job in presenting. How are the um, top <coughs> 10 finalists being prepared for the um, competition? Okay, so we, we held an orientation session for the 10 finalists. Mm -hmm. So following from the video submissions, the 10 finalists, um, we have Leon Hess Secondary, Clendon Mason, Sir Ira Simmons, Castries Comprehensive, St. Joseph's Convent, Viewford Comprehensive, and Sufre Comprehensive. Mm -hmm. So those 10 finalists participated or benefited from an orientation session on April, April 19th. Mm -hmm. And there they were, um, they were briefed on public speaking um, skills. Mm -hmm. It was a, a one hour presentation, but I think the, the presenter did a very good job in ensuring that they understood the different public speaking techniques what is required, you know, how do you capture the audience attention if your presentation, eye contact, you know, those sort of things that we probably take for granted, mm -hmm. but the students definitely needed to um, get a grip on in, prep in preparation for the public speaking competition. And we have, um, we also have, um, you know, uh, outside of that, we have support in terms of up, up to now, teachers are still asking questions. Mm -hmm. You know, the students would leave the teachers, I don't understand this, or can you explain? So the teachers now would reach out to the Ministry of Tourism through the education officer for any additional guidance. Because like I said, we want to ensure that come next week, our 10 finalists are prepared to wow the judges, mm -hmm. to wow the audience, and to speak comfortably on a subject matter, whichever topic that they choose. Now, the topics that <coughs> they choose, it, must it align with the objectives of the Ministry of Tourism? Um, not necessarily. Like I said, um, these are the topics that the Caribbean Tourism Organization have selected for the Youth Congress. So our strategy last year and this year is to utilize those same topics. So mm -hmm. for the local competition, we, we present those same topics as options. So whoever emerges as winner would have already um, had a, a good, um, uh, how should I put it, a good um, ground in terms of the, the, um, the, cho the selected topic. Okay. So what would happen then is that we work with that student to perfect or further develop their presentation mm -hmm. to make it more um, competitive when they get to the point of participating regionally okay right we'll take a quick break right now and when we get back we'll discuss more especially about the prizes because <laughs> if the children were as excited no. i believe you no uh, problem i am just as excited to find out what the prizes are and if i should be trying to participate well you in the public you may not be in the myself. age range but you you can give it a shot we can try something <laughs> we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with more tv30 here we are inside of our national tourism public speaking competition for 2024 more after this. Experience this in Lucia Jasanoff's Festival 2024. Get ready for one epic fete with Caribbean Fusion on May 10th. You don't want to miss Marshall Montano ignite the stage with Soka Fire. And Paris Hammond brings the sweet melodies of Lovers Rock. Then, dive into the conscious reggae vibes with Misha. St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival 2024, April 30th to May 12th, 2024. Start planning your trip. 
Welcome back to TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and today with me is Ms. Samantha Charles, the Tourism Officer. And we're discussing the 2024 National Tourism Public Speaking Competition. We have 10 schools, 10 students getting ready. Is it 10 or we have more we than have ten? We have approximately seven. Mm -hmm. Eight schools. Eight schools. My eight apologies. Eight schools with 10 participants. 10 participants. Okay. Yes, so we have schools, one ten. school with, with more than one. Ah. Yeah, one school has three um, participants and the other schools each have one student participating. How do the schools feel about that? Do they feel disadvantaged at all? Well, no, because the, each school has the opportunity to register a maximum of three students. Okay. So in the video competition, we had instances where one school, um, one student from a particular school made it to the, in the, the top 10 for the video submissions mm -hmm. and another school, all three students, their videos were so good that they made it to the top 10. Oh, so okay. a school can register a maximum of three students. Yes. So okay. What are the <coughs> age um, ranges uh, for the competition? Okay. So a while ago I was speaking about me probably joining and yeah, um, you too. All oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, she, she just laid it right out there. <laughs> so the age range is 14 to 17. Mm -hmm. We stick to the age range um, used by the CTO, um, given the fact that for the regional competition, all junior ministers and commissioners of tourism throughout the region must be 14 to 17 years old. So we cannot go outside of that. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, the prizes. Um, I'm yes. sure there are exciting prizes in there. There are. What are the prizes included for yeah. the winners or the runners up of the competition? Okay. We have an exciting bundle of prizes, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, they range from Chromebooks to smartphones. We have, um, as part of the prize for the first place, there's a partial scholarship to the South Louis Community College. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Tourism is of the firm belief that education, continuous education, is very important. So in as much as we have those other fun prizes, we want to ensure that our students get an opportunity to further their education in any particular um, area. Mm -hmm. We also have um, weekend uh, passes. We have day passes. We have lunches, etc. We've, um, we've gotten a lot of support from our tourism partners and stakeholders and for that we are extremely grateful so and we also appreciate the involvement and the time taken by the teachers to assist the students so we recognize them and we also have some very nice um, you know product related prizes so they can you know experience the the tourism product yes so the prizes are very very attractive mm -hmm. um, if nothing else, it, it, I think, like I said, when we presented to the schools, they were like, wow, you know, you're all giving all that? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, we give all that. <laughs> yeah. So we have some good prizes. Excellent. Now, there's cash as well. I forgot to mention. Well there's that's very important. How you could, how you there's <laughs> the there's cash as well. Yes, there's cash as well. And um, another thing I should mention uh -huh. is that all students will be recognized, um, as you, everyone can appreciate not everybody can win mm -hmm. first there's first second third but we appreciate the efforts of all our participants so every single student all 10 students will be recognized um by you know us providing some type of tangible um prize okay. yeah how long has the competition <coughs> been in existence longer than my tenure at the ministry of tourism longer than you know we before i i transition to the Ministry of Tourism. Mm -hmm. um, I can't give an exact so timeline, not, not but new. no, it's not new. But what the Ministry of Tourism is trying to do now mm -hmm. is to give it, um, heighten the visibility and awareness by looking at, well, what we probably did not do better, mm -hmm. did not do in the past, and what we can do given the era that we're in, given yes. the interest of, us, of our students. So we want to ensure that the we, there's increased interest and we retain the interest of the competition throughout the years. Representation is very important for, for us, I, I there, assume. Yeah. Okay, why, why would you <coughs> say it is important? What is the significance of uh, the 2024 
Junior Minister of Tourism representing St. Lucia mm. at uh, the CTU. Okay, so first off, we need, we need somebody as the face of tourism for the youth. Mm -hmm. Honorable Minister is the face of tourism <laughs> in general, but we need a, a somebody... A more youthful look. <laughs> <laughs> we need somebody as the face of tourism for the youth, somebody mm -hmm. who can resonate with young people, mm -hmm. somebody who can, um, you know, speak to tourism, but from a, a, a student or a younger, Standpoint. right, yeah. younger person's perspective, and um, regionally, mm -hmm. we are looking for a student that can go up against the best of the best. At the regional competition, there are certain countries that they come strong, mm -hmm. really, really strong. So we will be working with our our winner, whoever emerges winner next week. We'll mm -hmm. be working with our winner to ensure that there, you know, when we get to that venue in for at the Youth Congress, mm -hmm. you know, all the other countries know what St. Lucia is bringing and they recognize the strength in terms of our, uh, our, our capacity and our capability to, you know, put our best foot forward. Are they privy to our videos? And, um, the regional, no. Mm -hmm. No, okay. No. So just before they try to set no. up their own game plan. No, the presentation is sent to the coordinators of okay. the Youth Congress, mm -hmm. and everybody sees each country's presentation on the day of the Youth Congress. What <coughs> specific criteria um, do is used, or do they use for selecting top ten videos for the competition? Local. Itself? Local and um, Okay, the so we're looking, based on the, the topic for this year, what makes you, what makes me a true St. Lucian? Mm -hmm. We looked at um, relevance to the topic. We looked at content. We looked at, um, you know, from an individual perspective, how can you sell, um, sell the different elements of St. Lucia culturally, historically, but putting a personal spin on it, mm -hmm. you know. So we looked at individuality. We looked at the student's ability to really um, sell that story and make you feel like if I say to you what makes me a true St. Lucian is growing up with my grandmother lighting coals with with toilet tissue and kerosene. You sound like you know, know what that. Well I do. <laughs> um, you know uh, not just saying that mm -hmm. but how you project, project it and it. how you sell that individual story mm -hmm. to let persons know hey these are the things that make me um, a, 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 a true St. Lucian. So um, these are some of the things that we looked at in judging the videos. Okay. <coughs> now, how does the Ministry of Tourism plan to encourage more collaboration across <coughs> countries? Because we mentioned that earlier. But how do you plan to encourage that through the, um, pre the presenters that we have the, uh, from the various schools? Okay. Um, I think what we, what we can do is look at the interests of mm. our students the not all our students um <coughs> not all students may have an interest in tourism as a discipline mm -hmm. some students will say to you i want to become an engineer notwithstanding almost all um almost all careers or jobs in some way directly or indirectly related to tourism yes. but i think we need to understand the mindset of the different students uh, you know um what are their thoughts on you know, different subject areas, their interests, mm -hmm. what are their beliefs. Some students are very strong in their convictions and beliefs on, beliefs on different things. And see how we could bring all of those different perspectives together mm -hmm. and see how we could use it to, you know, um, you know link it to tourism. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you never know, you may come up with some very interesting um, outcomes. So collaborating across cultures, understanding the student population, even the students' backgrounds. Yeah. Some students have some interesting backgrounds um, and see how we could tap into this in enhancing the, the, um, the tourism experience. In enhancing that, um, what, are, what are some of the ways uh, that you, do you think <coughs> uh, that the youth participants mm. can contribute to the growth, the development of Simulation's tourism okay. industry? Um, there's one initiative that we are currently um, working on, which I will not, I will not mention prematurely, mm -hmm. but we have recognized that there's a wealth of talent among our young people. 
and we have noted that you know there are certain areas where the students can contribute to the diverse product that we offer to visitors so mm -hmm. if you look at the cruise product what is it that we have on the ground what are some of the areas where we can enhance the product offering to cruise passengers so that's just one little hint mm -hmm. so in mm -hmm. looking at um, in, in focusing on that we the Ministry of Tourism is working on um, an initiative to include um, students participation so to speak in um, augmenting what we currently offer to our visitors so that's one particular area now earlier on you mentioned that um, the uh, Ministry of Tourism they were going to assist in of course ensuring that our winner, overall winner, mm -hmm. has that delivery skill to bring mm -hmm. it home. Um, how are we ensuring that the effective delivery skills among the top 10 finalists, even before we have already selected a winner, how are we, um, how is the ministry, sorry, mm -hmm. ensuring that uh, certain strategies are implemented? Are we going to the, the various schools or are they coming together in, a, in one, under one um, roof to um, mm -hmm. have mock, um, debates and whatnot okay well i mentioned the orientation session mm -hmm. so that particular initiative is primarily for the top 10, top 10 only. the top 10 students mm -hmm. but we we have noted that even before that the students require some level of um assistance in in generally you know enhancing the interest in the competition public speaking um is an area where we should encourage students to um, have more focus. Um, somebody said to me recently that some of the most successful persons are not necessarily the best intellect, but the best speakers, mm -hmm. where they are able to, you know, retain the audience attention and you know drive a point across. So we really need to look at how we can encourage more students to take part in public speaking. So by the time you have initiatives or activities such as these rolling out there's already an interest because it is a public speaking activity mm -hmm. and the student then now just has to do the necessary work in terms of tourism research etc etc the opportunities for the 2024 <coughs> junior minister of tourism okay okay um can you tell us what what would it be what what are they what does it look like for the uh, okay the junior tourism sure so uh, the minister. first the first official duty of the junior minister would be to represent St. Lucia at the Youth Congress. Mm -hmm. So um, that Congress is taking place in September in the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. So for the second time, it's hosted in the Cayman Islands. So on the local front, there are certain um, areas we've, we've started having discussion on in terms of the best, um, the best type of platforms or initiatives to engage the junior minister. One must understand that he or she is at school, so we do not want to take the student out of their school mm -hmm. their school um their school life but we also we always try to engage or include the junior minister in different tourism related activities um you know to to showcase that particular student and ensure that there's representation from a youth perspective next yeah, the grand finals will be held when and where yes so the national tourism public speaking competition will be held on thursday may 16th at the Harbour Club Hotel from 9 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. p.m. 12.30 p.m. <laughs> I stand corrected. Thank you very much, Scotty. Right. So um, it's that's the venue. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we have 10 promising students from a, a cross-section of secondary schools presenting on one of four topics. Mm -hmm. Solo travel, adventure travel, the blue economy, or collaboration across cultures and we have again selected a pool of very efficient and competent judges mm -hmm. um, that will be um, critiquing you know those presentations and you know giving us what they perceive to be the best representation for 2024 2025 all right well, thank you very much, Ms. Charles, for being our guest. Thank on you our for TV having me. Program, and I wish you and the students all the best and um, the judges as well in selecting our new junior minister thank for 2024. You. Thank you very much. This has been TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. I've been your host, Kendall Eugene. Thank you for joining.